Yes, sir. I want to appreciate you for coming through. Let us get this interview in before things go crazy, you know what I mean? That's what, that's what we like to do. We like to get started before it gets started. You feel me? So, let the, let the doers know a little bit about you, who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Um, so I go by the name Down the Bat, D O M D A B A P, and um, I'm like a melodic artist, like do melodies, R and B, rap a little, just to give you a feeling of vibe, stuff like that. So where you from? I'm from Harlem. So tell people how talk, talk, talk to us about the culture of Harlem and like where you're from. You said Harlem, right? Yeah. So to be honest, I'm from Harlem, but I jack Harlem the most. That's where I'm from. But as I'm just a straight New Yorker, like Harlem, I got family in Rockland, 845, recently moved up to the 845. So it's like Harlem is a place where it's like, just get fly, get fly and just do it at your own, at your own speed. Like just get straight to it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, just fly, cool. Not try to do too much, but whatever you do, you just have to make it like fashionably and fly. But as I've been away from Harlem and moving up like to the 805, I'm not like, it's a little bit of a difference, but it's still a New York thing. Like when you from New York, you're from New York. You got that grind, that grit, and it's still fly, but it's a little bit different in different like places, different spaces. So it's just like, yeah, it's just about like just being fly. The Harlem in me is just always gonna say just getting fly, but the New York in me is just about like hard work and get it, grind, and just go get it. So talk about the Harlem music culture. Has it influenced your sound or you as a rapper at all? Um, <laughs> not, yeah, yeah. So, like, growing up, like, Jim Jones, the whole dip set, um, the wave, you know, Max B, like, just like that sound in a sense kind of made me like who I am, like, with the whole melodies and just try to, like, you know, just try to be that just have a wavy sound just be you know smooth calm and stuff like that um but yeah but my sound is just a little bit different because it's like i'm more of like an r&b type of vibe so yes and no but i'm just coming across the track just trying to be smooth just not trying to be smooth but just you know just calm relax chill a vibe if that makes sense so Talk a little bit about the 845 music scene that now that you moved over here and explain a little bit like like give us your point of view on the 845 music scene. Um it's like mixed. So you got people from Rockland, whatever. Like my favorite artist, shout out to my boy Shoddy. Like that. He he can give you everything you want in one song. Like he can talk about girls, he can talk about streets, he can talk about fashion, and it can just be in one song. So like like just styles like that. Um and then you got people from the bird, like the dark side, like shout out my boy Ju. Like he just give you that that smooth, but that grit, like that get straight to it. You know what I mean? Like that that grind, like that gritty music where it's like give you some bars and it's still aggressive. And you got my boy Block, Blackito, who is like, he just aggressive from the start and it's still like, oh, like just make your head knob. So it's like kind of like a, a, a molting pot, if that makes sense. Okay, so talk about like, when you first started making music, right? What mm -hmm. brought you to like want to make that, like that day, what brought you to wanting to make that song? So the first song I ever made was called Wish You Want. And um, at first, like, I was just, you know, the, the regular kid sitting in the backseat, mom's playing music. Most of it was like R&B, like Soul Child and um, stuff like that. Neo, Chris, Chris, everybody loved Chris. So it was like just me in the backseat just listening to music. Like, you know what? I just like it. Just like had that passion for it, just listening and seeing it back to back to back when the songs came on the radio. And then as I got a little little bit older I lost my voice so I was like damn I can't really sing no more so I was like it is what it is like it's raps so then um I heard my boy shoddy run down I was like that's fire like
like that shit was just calm. Like it was just it was wavy. So I was like, let me let me try to do it. And then I uh, made the song What She Want. And I was rocking with it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I could do this. My sound was a little bit different from what it was now. It was a little bit more of like rapping. And I was like, yeah, I like this. And then I moved around. I started um, doing some music in VA. Um, and I was like, let me try to, let me try to sing. So I tried it and then like, I was like, ooh, I like it. And now I'm making the songs that I'm making now. So, yeah. So, so from there to now, how did you educate yourself to make better music? Um, just life, just going through things. Like before, I felt like it wasn't that I didn't have a purpose to make music, but I was just making music just to make music. Now when I make music, it's more of a of what I'm feeling and trying to create a, a masterpiece of how I'm feeling. So like kind of telling the story, but giving it like a little bit more details of like what's going on in my life. Before it was like, oh, let me hear a beat and just whatever happens. Now it's like, you know what? I'm putting layers into it so you can kind of feel it a little bit more. Um, I'm a, I like to dance or whatever, like break dance and stuff like that. So when I make my songs, like just to give it some life, some more of myself, just to, cause that's what people want. Like they want to get a little bit of a sneak peek of your life. So just to put myself into it just a little bit more, being a, a little bit vulnerable, if that makes sense. What would you say influenced the break dancing? Um, I don't know. I just always like to dance. It's just kind of like in my DNA. Just like, just being happy, having fun, um, going to parties. Just, you know, the beat come on. It just, it just makes you just want to get up, move around, just just feel good. Just like a, just feel good. I didn't really influence it, really. Not work. So, what are some, who are some artists that you say you're influenced by? All right, so I'm influenced by a few. So Chris Brown, obviously Michael Jackson, Curtis Mayfield, like that's my guy. He's, he's if you know, you know. Um, Drake, Kanye, Music Soul Child. Um, it's a lot of people. Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones is tough. But yeah, it's like, it's it's a lot of people. Meek, um, Cam, Mace, the list goes on and on and on, you know? So it's like, it's, it's a lot. So how long have you been making music? Um, like OGs in there. I'm gonna say 2019, like, 2019, cause I made my I made what she want. Like at the end of the year, 2018, I sent it to um uncle whatever, and he's like, nah, I ain't gonna lie, like I rock with it. So I used to take trips like to the um, to VA, and he was just working on some stuff. So what yeah. You um, he was kind of, he was my manager at the time. So like, he would just, I would meet him. We'd go to the studio, make some tracks. Uh, we shot a few videos and then stuff like that. And then that all led up into like 2020 and yeah, stuff like that. Okay, so, so what was some future artists you see yourself working with? That's a good question. Who are some artists you see yourself working with in the future? So I can see, um, I can see myself working with Drake, Chris, um, basically everybody that, well, besides Curtis, unfortunately, um, but everybody that I mentioned in that list, um, recently I've been listening to a lot of, um, Cash Cobain and, um, damn, I forgot his name. Chow? And Chow, yeah, they, they go crazy. They go crazy. Down. You heard of the B-Jets? Nah, but after this, I'm gonna I'm I'm get to him. And that little situation there, too. Yeah. Crazy white boy. Shout out my boy Vontae. Vontae, he tough, he tough, he tough. Vontae the singer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He from PC. He tough, he tough. He tough. So you went to the whole Sexy Joe wave? Yeah. You got any Sexy Joe songs out there? Um. Or are, are, are there any out there in the vault or any to come? So, like. I don't, okay, so 
it's, it's similar. It's similar. But I wouldn't. I mean, I guess you could say sexy drill. I, was, I guess you can say it's sexy drill. I call myself light skin music. I feel like I make light skin music. So it's similar. What is light skin music? So light skin music is. So you know how like how people like to joke on us light skins like being a uh, being in our feelings and stuff like that. So I kind of did a spin off of that. Like my music is being in your feelings, but you're not really in your feelings. It's just it's just real shit. Like for example, you fuck with a girl, or whatever, right? So you fuck with her, you want to do certain things, and she like, I want you to treat me different, and then I make the music like, I would treat you different, and these are all the things that I would do if things were different. So that's why I say I make light skin music, cause like I be in my feelings, like oh yeah, I, I really fuck with you, I fuck with you, I wish things was different, but I'm not, I, I'm not gonna be, yeah, like. So that's why I said I make light skin music type place. What is the one thing that happened that made you realize you really want to be a rapper? Um, when I listen to like, when I listen to some of my stuff, cause it's like, I feel like my superpowers is making my hooks. Like I feel like at the end of the day, it's not a competition with nobody, but if it was a competition, I feel like I go bar for bar with my hooks with anybody. So like, yeah, just listen, just listening to yourself. Like even with you and your videos, when you look in your videos, you're like, yo bro, I like, I really did that. Cause you really be doing that. So with myself is like, when I'm listening to it, not even listening to it from an ear where it's like, oh, me being biased to myself. Cause I feel like I'm probably the harshest, the biggest critique when it comes to myself. But when I'm listening to something and I'm like, dang, like this can go somewhere. Like, like that's what made me feel like, yeah, I can take it somewhere. What is one thing you feel like as an artist that's stopping you from being where you want to be? So I'm gonna give you two answers. The simplified answer of it is myself, really. To break it down of that, I feel like I have talents that I don't utilize. For example, like I said, I can dance. I don't post myself dancing like that. I, should, I need to post more. I just need to get, mainly I just need to get out of my head. I feel like a lot of times um, I make excuses when it's like, it could be simple solutions for them. There should be no reason where it's like, you're as talented as you are and you're not propelling the way you feel like you should. So now like my new year's resolution is to, you know, just stay out of your head a little bit less and just work a little bit harder and just work a little bit smarter and just get ready, you know, put the content out and move on. Simple stuff like that. So are you, are you, are you somebody that's very sad with social media, like very good at marketing? Cause I usually ask people, what is the best form of marketing that you see working for yourself? So I don't I don't want to say I'm bad at marketing, but it's always things that I can learn. Um, at the moment, the best thing, something that's working for me is just being in touch with the people. So like just finding anything that I could do where I can just like just show awareness to myself. Because at the end of the day, I gotta look at myself as a brand. So I think the best thing you can do is is just look at yourself as a brand and start moving accordingly to that. So like just trying to reach the people a little bit more, little interactions, like um, it's crazy just having a conversation with somebody like it will be people like dang like you would never know who they are until they tell you what they are like I remember one time I met the guy um, I forgot what I forgot what his name was but he was a designer for Yeezy had a conversation with him got his contact and everything see that's it that goes back to the question that you had before I was like the only thing that stopped me low key is me because like I got his contact. Did I hit him up yet? No. I got the contact um, for like a guy that he's really lucrative and like the nightlife space. Got his contact because I made the connection. Did I hit him up yet? No. So mainly it's just myself getting myself. But that's a good thing. So now I know what's stopping me. So now like I'm linking up with the right people and just stand out my head and then making things happen. What makes you connect with somebody like as far as networking? What makes you think? What makes you be like, you know what, this is somebody I want to tap in with? So like that's something that I'm working on now because a lot of times I don't want to make it seem like um 
name on them in a sense. So it's like, I try to make it as, I don't, let me not say that. I try to make it seem like the connection is genuine as possible. So like, it's a natural connection. So like with those other two people, we were just in the same scenario at that time. So um, I was at work, whatever. And I was just helping him out. And then he had a question. He was like, yo, bro, I want to get this. He had a problem. And I was like, you know what? I thought outside of the box, not knowing who he was, uh, both people were like, cause it was two different scenarios, but um, not knowing who they were. And I was able to like maneuver just me being myself. And I guess they rocked with it. So like in those two situations, it was just like the genuine connection. He was telling me what he did. Other guy was telling me what he did. And I was like, word. So it's just like, just having a genuine connection and then it just has to happen. So like, even with you, like the first time I like even heard about you was like when you was doing the, the, um, the 845 battles. So like, I was like, I ain't gonna lie, he's doing his thing, but I didn't wanna just jump the gun cause it was like on some weird, even though like when I do things, I try to do it with, everything I do is like with pure attentions. I don't ever wanna be on no weird stuff. But at the same time, it's like, we both from the city, so. I don't ever want to feel like I'm being thirsty, so it's like. And, I, and I'm honestly, I'm, I try. I like. I try. I, try. I just know when not to be like wait till I have myself. I don't. I don't feel like I'm ahead of myself at all. Really, especially when I'm in the town. If somebody in the town want to link up. I'm gonna make sure if they lock it with me. I'm gonna do right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to do something extra. I'm gonna try to do something more. Because like, at the end of the day, like. Working for me, if I can get it to work for anybody else, it's, they see the value in me. That's it's really what I'm chasing. I mean, people see the value of what I'm trying to offer, what I'm trying to do for niggas and shit. That you know what I'm saying? Not for that. Um. So, how 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 is down the bat when it comes to bodies of work? You know, do you have how, do you have any bodies of work out there? Like when I say that, like mixtapes, albums. EPs, is there any like lost discography out there? And if not, is there anything to look forward to 2024 or in the future? So 2020, that's that's kind of like when I was had stuff out. So like the work that I was doing with my uncle, whatever, we had it out. It's still out. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say it's it's bad because like as you grow over time, I just feel like a lot of that stuff, like the two, the two tracks, was just a little bit dated in a sense, right? So like from 2020, that whole 2020 year, I felt like that's when I was a stride where I was doing it on my own and I was finding myself as an artist. I was doing it the way I wanted to do it. And I was just getting that sound where I could put like more, more in myself into it just to make it like my artwork. Um, I had a project called, uh, what was it, They Left? No, it wasn't They Left. I forgot what the project was, but I had a project that had seven songs. I was rocking with it, but then like over time, I was like, you know what? Let me just redo it. So then from, let's say the 2022 that's when I can say like as an artist I was I can compete with anybody even though it's not a competition and I don't want it to like come across as a competition but I feel like if you're a real artist you have a competition with, with yourself just to make better music just like continue to get better and better and better so from that aspect from 2022 I felt like that's when I started to hit my stride so my first song that I really rock with OD um, W.I.D. What are you doing and then from that point on, I just have a few singles. So I have WID, which is probably one of my favorites. I have Loud Thoughts. Um, and I have other other singles. And I have 411, what I recently just dropped. But in the, the future, just you're going to see a lot of more singles and content. Content and singles. Singles, content, content, singles. Stuff like that. So before we wrap it, talk about some 845 artists that you really got your eyes on and you're looking forward to working with. Or just artists in general. I like to say 845. Because, yeah, 845, yeah. Um, it's a lot, but a lot of them, okay. So one of them, my boy Drew, 94 Drew, he's tough. What's his name? 94 Drew. He's from Ryan? He's tough. Nah, yeah, he's from the 845. He's from Newburgh. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
like I said, my boy Shadi. Um, like I ain't gonna lie, it's so many people that it's like I don't wanna continue no. then and say I, I'm gonna forget, but it's a lot of people. So yeah, shout out my boy Fro. So everybody that comes to Fro Studio for me, I wanna go. Oh yeah, like hit me. So any videos to, to be to be expected for the year? Uh, anything you wanna tell your fans before we close out? So basically, I just want to say stay tuned to um, all my social medias at Dom the Bat because, like, yeah, like consistent. I'm a drop consistent. Um, new songs that I have out, I have a song called So Sick. So get ready for that one. Um, yeah, just content, content, content. So yeah, content. I just want to appreciate you guys for having me out to have this quick conversation. Shout out to my boys at SLDM TV. I go by the name Dom the Bat, and we out.